Hi there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike, back for another one. Now, have you thought about getting on 80 metres or 40 metres at home with the winter approaching? They're going to be great bands to use, especially in the evening. Have you thought about doing that? Maybe you've got a small garden? Well, let's have a look at some of the possibilities that you could use for antennas in that situation. to have you back again uh, if you're a returning viewer then fantastic if you're new to the channel think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell for any future videos so uh, it's a problem that many of us in the UK face is how to get on the lower bands in such a small space so I thought I'd investigate or talk about some of the possibilities. Uh, from time to time, I'll just point up there and maybe uh, pop a little link to a video I've done before on, uh, on 40 and 80 metres and how to get those into a small garden. And hopefully that'll help you, especially if this is your first time contemplating getting on the lower HF bands at home. So we'll just talk about the different antenna types. So first of all, let's have a look then at end feds. Now, you know, with end fed antennas, you've got two types. You've got resonant and N-fed antennas and non-resonant N-fed antennas. Now, resonant is a touchy subject, a touchy word. For the purpose of this video, I'll just group them into two types of N-fed of antennas. Ones that don't necessarily require the use of a tuner and those that do. So the ones that do require a tuner. Well, okay, you've got a variety of configurations you can choose from. Some people choose to feed their, uh, their um, antenna with a, a, some form of ballon or an un, so a 4 to 1 or a 9 to 1. Some people feed them directly, uh, the antenna wire directly into a, uh, into a balanced tuner with then a very, very good earth from a connection from that tuner to earth. Now, the thing is, that is a, that is a good option, nothing wrong with that. For the non-resonant NFEDs, you will need probably a very good earth, or at least a good size counterpoise. Because the one thing that non-resonant NFEDs tend to suffer from, and by the way, I'm not knocking them because many people use them to great effect. They're probably more skillful than I am at putting them up, all right? But what they do tend to suffer from from time to time, really, I find, is um, RF in the shack. They tend to be quite noisy. So basically, I've used in the past 9 to 1 anons, for example, okay? Now, if you're looking at the length of antenna wire with that, then you've got to be careful to avoid any half waves. So for example, for 80 metres, you probably haven't got, if you haven't got the space for it anyway, you've got to worry of you. But a half wavelength, depending on what part of 80 you're using, say you're a voice part of, it, of SSB portion in the UK, would be like 3 point, is it 6.5 to 3.8? Not even 3.8, probably 3.78, because uh, we've got the DX window above that, and uh, that tends to get crowded in the evenings with the, the big stations. So many people congregate around 3.7 to 3.75 or something like that, or 7.75. Um, so you're looking at about 125 to 130 feet long uh, piece of wire in that sort of part of the 80 meter spectrum because it's a big old band for it to be a half wave. Now if CW, if uh, data is your thing, you're going up to about 133 feet or so, something like that to be a half wave. You want to avoid that. Now if you haven't got the space, it's not an issue anyway, is it? So what sort of um, lengths should people choose? Well, lots of people, when they use 9 to 1s, tend to go down the route, I think, of around 72 feet or 84 feet. Uh, they tend to be favoured lengths because they'll give you some multiband options as well, you see. The 9 to 1 is designed to get you a, a reasonable match on a variety of bands, providing your antenna wire, the actual the wire you're using to radiate, isn't um, a half wavelength at any particular frequency. So lots of people put up a 72 foot, 84 foot or longer, 140 foot is used, maybe 120 foot I think as well. Um, but you need to run, uh, need to have a decent earth system or a good counterpoise, good long counterpoise. Um, lots of people who run the 72 and 84 foot long uh, antenna wires tend to use I think around a 17 foot counterpoise, which is basically just a, just a bit of wire attached to the ground lug of the 9 to 1 and Now. When we're looking at other types of NFEDs, we're looking at something called the NFED half wave. Now, you just heard me say, well, hang on, 80 metres, 133 feet or 125 feet, I've not got the length, I've got, not got the length of garden for it. Well, there is another option for 80 metres. Uh, there is a design whereby you have 66 feet of wire and then you have a, uh, basically a loading coil 
followed by about two meters, which is about six to seven feet of wire after that. So the whole antenna is something like about 75 feet long. And that will give you 80 meters. Okay, it, it will be a narrower bandwidth, but it will still get you on 80 meters, as well as 40, 20, 15, and 10. So it's a multi-band antenna. And providing, of course, certainly for 40 to 10, you shouldn't need a tuner, by the way, shouldn't need a tuner at all. Because effectively, up until that loading coil, that 66 feet, is an end, is a half wave on 40. And therefore, will give you a harmonic match on 20, 15, and 10 as well. As a full, uh, is it one and a half and two wavelength long antenna in those particular bands. Not saying that the, uh, the radiation pattern will be superb on the higher bands, but you'll get on them and you'll make contacts providing those bands are open. For 80 meters, it's effectively a much shortened half wave. Now, you can also look at verticals. Now, uh, for 80 metres, you're going to be looking probably at an inverted L. And you're probably going to be looking maybe at a uh, some, if, if you don't want an inverted L, you just want a straight vertical, you're going to be looking at quite a short loaded vertical. Now, again, as for the N-fed half wave, if it's loaded, you're probably going to have a slightly narrower bandwidth on 80 metres. You need a very good radial system, a ground radial system for that as well. Uh, there are some commercial antennas that will offer that. There's the... Uh, is the Hustler range will get you on 80 meters. Again, they are trapped antennas, so again, they are shortened, of course. They're not full half wavelengths, which is 66 feet. If you want to go the inverted L route, of course, you can. You can run it up, say, 20, 25 feet vertically on the fishing pole and then horizontally for 40 feet. You can slope down slightly. It's not a big deal if it does. And that will get you some decent contacts, potentially more DX contacts as well, because you have the vertical portion of it. Um, for me personally, in my sort of semi-urban environment, um, verticals tend to be very noisy on 40 meters and below, but it's worth slinging one up and seeing. And of course, there are other commercial uh, versions of the full uh, 66 foot inverted L you can use, such as the DX Commander, for example, and those sorts of antennas too, which uh, a lot of people use and, and, and enjoy using. For me personally, uh, verticals are very uh, noisy at home, just, just how it is for me. But your situation might well vary. And finally, uh, my preferred option, if I'm being honest, is a centre-fed uh, dipole stroke doublet antenna. Now, you've got two options here for 80 metres. You could use a, uh, a sort of 40, 80, trapped 80 uh, dipole, all right? So much like the N-fed half wave, uh, it's, you're probably going to have a full half wave length for 40 metres, which will be two 33 foot legs or thereabouts fed in the centre. Then at the end of each of those legs, Again, you'd have some sort of trap or coil and then a bit of wire, which will be the 80, which will allow you to get on 80 meters. I mean, overall, the design for those antennas is somewhere typically around 50 feet per leg. That's 100 feet. So it's still a relatively uh, large-ish antenna, but it'll get you on 40 and 80 meters. Again, if it's shortened on 80 meters like that, then the bandwidth, the two to one bandwidth will be quite a bit narrower. But again, if you're just an SSB user or just into CW or data, then you can make that choice, can't you? Now, another form of centre-fed antenna, which is my personal favourite for 80 metres, is the doublet, the multiband doublet. Now, unlike the, the dipole, which is fed with coax, the multiband doublet is fed with ladder line. Now, you can have 300 ohm uh, ladder line, 450 ohm, or you can roll your own, basically, okay? And what you do with that, you feed it at the centre like you do with coax. The important thing with that is not to get anywhere near any metal, because that will uh, cause it to radiate, and then you'll have some problems with RF and stuff like that as well. But um, keep it away from that. Uh, run it down as you would with a, with a, with a coax-fed uh, dipole at a right angle to the, uh, to the legs of the, of the, of the dipole, or, or in this case the doublet, which is the same thing anyway. Except, of course, it's fed with, uh, with the... Uh, with the ladder line. So you run it down either to directly to a balanced tuner, which is probably the best way to do it, or not far off that in terms of efficiency, you could feed it to maybe a one-to-one -one balance. Some people use a four-to-one, but I prefer a one-to-one, just -one, better for me. And then run a very short, as short as you can, less than 10 feet, nice low loss, low loss thick piece of coax to uh, an ATU, or even, even into a tuner where you can manually adjust it yourself. It depends how easy it is for you to bring the ladder line into the shack, okay? But you want to avoid any metal window frames if you can, avoid any metal at all if you can help it, all right? Um, now, with the beauty of that is not only will you likely to get 80 and 40, you'll also get 
you know, the higher bands too. And depending on how long it is, you might even be able to get to 160 on it. You never know. Um, and the, the other good, uh, good thing about it is the length isn't that critical. All right. You don't have to be a half wavelength on 80. Uh, it could be as low, really, as even as one third wavelength. I mean, people get away with using 85, 88 foot long doublets for 80 meters. I personally like to stretch it up to a three eighths, which probably for me, on, on the voice portion of SSB, on, on SSB for 80 meters, means I'm aiming at something around 90 to 95 feet. But as I say, it's the multi-band option that, that uh, interests me, so I can get the higher bands, higher than 40, with it as well. And I do tend to find, I have to admit to you, that a center-fed antenna at home for me is quieter, less noisy than an N-fed or a vertical. It's just how it is for me. Um, obviously, you've got to fork out for a tuner, um, ladder line, some people think it's it's hard to work with. I don't personally, I think it works really well. You can make your own, frankly, if you want to. There's plenty of designs on the internet if you want to do your own version. Um, you can even make your own one-to-one -one ballon or four-to-one if you want to. But there's plenty out there you can buy. I just think they're very, uh, very adaptable and usable antennas at home. And it's probably my favourite multiband antenna of all, really, I have to say. The NFED Halfway pushes its close, and the NFED Halfway is my number one for portable use. No question about that. But it's the, uh, the doublet that I particularly like. And on 80 metres, as I say, 90 foot, 95 foot on the voice portion, you'll have a ball. The other thing to say as well, if you've got a really small garden, don't be afraid to uh, to snake the wires around a bit. Put them, put them on the top of a fence, inverted V, running along a fence, run it here, back there, back there. Be creative. Dipoles and doublets are quite forgiving antennas, right? The only thing you've got to really watch is you try and bring the feed line down directly 90 degrees down from the feed point as long as you can, right? I use a... Um, I use a fishing pole, a fiberglass one, not a fishing pole, it's a, uh, one of those wind jammer poles you know, for, um, for flags. It's all fiberglass, so it's non-conductive. And I've epoxy glued the, uh, the sections together. So it's basically one continuous pole. It, it can't collapse. It's, it's glued to it an inch of its life, uh, all the sections. So um, effectively, I can run the ladder line down that. It's not a problem. Uh, and that makes sure it stays at 90 degrees. What I don't want to do is have, is have the lad line run, blowing in the breeze. That's fiberglass. It's going to snap. So, but it's been up for, it's been up for two or three years before I took it down uh, recently. Absolutely fine. Never a moment's trouble with it in a, in a practical sense, in its, uh, in its sort of sturdiness. So you can use those and uh, they'll work really well for you. Now, uh, as I say, don't be afraid to bend the wires around, okay? And uh, as I say, I'll, I'll put a little link up there for when I used my doublet last year. Uh, crazy design, but uh, I've got, I've managed to work around the UK and into, uh, into sort of the uh, Northern Europe without any problems at all with that antenna. It did really well. Now, I did say earlier we'd look at 40 meters as well. So if you, if really 80 meters is too much of a thing, or you're not really into 80 meters, you just fancy dabbling on 40, there are options out there too. Now, for the NFED, if you're looking at the NFED non-resonance, say using a 9 to 1, and then I would say probably 53 feet is a good, good length for you to use. Again, it's a non-half wave length. You get on the higher bands, and it's certainly long enough to get you on 40 meters. Now, uh, for the uh, NFED half wave, then 66 feet. Again, I'll put a link up there for the NFED half wave. I've used both the mono band version which is fed with an LC circuit, which is just, just for 40 meters. And also the 49 to one, which got with 66 feet of wire, got me 40, 20, 15, and 10. So again, great options for you to use. You can have shortened versions of those NFED half waves as well, just like the 80 meter one I, just, I described to you earlier. So again, with a loading coil, I, I even use it portable. Again, I'll put another video up there. I'll just point there so I can remind myself to put the video up there for you later. So the link will be there for you when you see the video. Um, and that's made by a company called High End Fed, which is basically 33 foot long wire up a, up a pole, uh, which is okay for 20 meters and 10 as a, as a full wave, no tuner. And then you've got a loading coil, another six foot of wire. So you're looking at about 39 feet or so, just under 12 meters of wire and, of, of the antenna in total with that coil in there as well. And uh, that gets you on 40 meters as well as 20 and 10. Again, with a reduced bandwidth for two to one, but it gets me about something like about 80 kilohertz under two to one, which for me using SSB 
uh, a, a portable as I use that antenna, and you can use it at home, it's absolutely fine. Um, so there we are, so end-fed half waves are a good option for you. Again, the doublet is the other one. So uh, you don't need 100 feet to get onto 40 meters or even 90 feet or 80 feet. You certainly don't even need the 66 foot for the half wave. Uh, effectively, uh, you can use maybe, uh, I've used in the past a 44 foot doublet for that. It's a one third wavelength. Now it's probably the outer limit of how short you can push it for it to become reasonably efficient. But I've worked across the Costa Rica and the States, no problems at all with it. And that was using 50 watts as a 2E, as a 2E zero, okay, in the UK. Um, if you can, push it up to 50 or 51 feet, which is then approaching 3 eighths. And anything from there above would be absolutely fine on 40 meters. And of course, like the, the bigger cousin I've used for 80, you will get 40, 20, 17, we get 30 as well if you want to use 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, whatever. Okay, again with the use of a tuner, again you can bring the ladder line into the shack to a balanced tuner, or you feed it via a one-to-one -one or four-to-one current balance with a short, thick piece of low, -lash, low loss coax even uh, into an ATU. Final thing, if, if a dipole is still your preferred option, as in a coax-fed uh, dipole, which would be a mono, well, would be a mono band on 40 uh, if it's shortened. Now, if you're using a 66 foot long uh, dipole on 40 meters, and again, you can bend it in inverted V, bring it down, bring it out, zig zigzag it a bit, try and keep those bends at least 90 degrees, by the way. Um, you might be able to get 15 meters out of that as well, probably with the use of a tuner, but you might be able to get 15 as well as 40. So if 15 opens, that's a bonus. Now, if you're using a shortened um, dipole for 40 meters and you're looking at being practically a monoband antenna, okay? Now, one way I've done this is use, a, use something called linear loading. Uh, all that means is you feed the two legs in the center as normal. You, they'll go down as normal. Say it's an inverted V, so it'll come down like that. But instead of ending there, you then join it to another piece of wire which comes back up. So effectively it goes down, join, join to another piece of wire and comes back up. So both legs literally go down and up like that. Or if you're doing it uh, crossways, it's down like that, okay? Um, I used 450 ohm ladder line as the two legs. So all I did literally was solder the two ends together. You just twist them together for tuning if you want to. And if you want to bring it in, if you want to tune it in a bit, then literally just cut the bottom leg that comes back and just trim that until you get a tune. Do, do both sides at the same length, of course. I found that I could get a good match on 40 meters throughout the, uh, the phone portion of the band, SSB, with a length of, now what was the length of that antenna? I think it was 46 feet in total. That's about 14 meters long. There you are. So each leg was seven meters, about 23 feet. All right, and that got me quite comfortably onto 40 meters. Now, it, I'm not sure, I think, I have a funny feeling when I looked into it that that antenna actually gave me a match on 12 meters as well. Um, I mean, 12 meters might be about as useful as a chocolate teapot at the moment, I don't know. But uh, hell, I think it gave me, it gave me a match in another band. It wasn't 15, I think it was 12 meters. Um, but I might have been having a dream about that. <laughs> Who knows quite why you dream about 12 meters now. I, I wouldn't know, but there you are. Anyway, that's another option for you, the linear loaded one. And I'll put a little, if I haven't done that already, I'll put a little uh, link up there somewhere for you to show you how I did that. In 80 meters. Now the winter's approaching. If you haven't got time in the day much to go on the radio in the evening is your operating time, then 20 is going to close not long after sunset. So, and sunset, of course, is about to become four or five o'clock in the afternoon. So look at 40 and 80 meters. There you go then. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't done already. It'd be great to have you on board. And uh, good luck with your uh, lower HF usage too. This is Tim G5TM, wishing you 73. And uh, hope to hear you on the band someday, perhaps on 80 meters. Bye-bye.